What's up guys, welcome to One UX Wonder. Today we're talking about how you can understand and memorize the UX research process. So if I can explain the UX research process like the backbone of your work. So it's like the foundation of everything you're going to do. So UX research depends on the process. And if you can understand the process, then you're ready to prepare for your interview and everything that comes in the job itself. So the process, process, process is everything. So understanding that you start with discovering the problem. What is the problem or problems you're trying to solve? How can we fix them? And in that stage, you want to understand who to talk to. So you're going to talk to the UX designer, interaction designer if you have one, the managers, any old documentation they have, so previous user research reports. So you want to capture all of that information and study it. So they'll give you time to do that. They normally give you a week or two, or sometimes three weeks, to actually look at the data, look at what's been done before. You need to go to a developer or analytics and Google, get the login details and check the analytics, check what the KPIs are, what the success rate is, what are users doing with the website, how they're interacting, what's their behavior with the website. Once you understand all of that, you can start to picture together what is the problem? What are the problems? And you may use a Miro board or mural board. You can do it on paper, you can do it in Word, you can do it in PowerPoint. It's up to you and that's good. And that's the flexibility of working that you can use any app you like to do your work. As long as you can show it, share it, it's okay. You can use anything you're comfortable with. So now once you've discovered that problem, what you really want to do is start to write that down, document it, hold a workshop, so like a kickoff meeting, or you could have a workshop, for example, where you invite ideas, so an ideation workshop. So it could be kickoff or ideation, um, or a discovery workshop. So you can have different types of wording, but the purpose is to discover what are the next steps, what are we going to do in these rounds or this round of user research, and what am I going to deliver? So you want to capture information and you also want to give back. You want to say, right, this is what I'm going to find out for the team. This is what I'm going to find out for the website, the app, the service. And so once you capture that plan, you're going to write it up officially as a user research plan. So you're going to write the user research plan and then present that. And in that, you'll include the date of the research, how many participants you're going to have, what the personas are, or the demographic of those users. And a lot of people struggle with this because they don't know who they're going to interview and make sure you include people with accessibility needs that's really important that you get that in there as well because there is a high percentage of people in the world that need a website or app to be accessible to them whether it's hearing impaired or visually impaired or other needs so you need to really test it with them now that's quite complicated and that's why we use and outsource that to other companies that specialize in accessibility needs, for example, WCAG 2.1, which is a regulation for web content accessibility guidelines. And you need to include those in your participants for user research, so don't forget that. Also demographics, income levels, parts of the country, and different types of users, age groups. Consider all of that in your user research plan. The other thing you want to do in your user research plan is include dates and timelines. When are you going to do what? So you need time for recruitment, you need time for the testing, you need time to collect the data, to do a thematic analysis, a report writing time you need, and then sharing it with the stakeholders. So that can take a period of six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, depending on how big the project is. But on average, I'd say four weeks is enough. So two weeks to plan and recruit and do the user testing, two weeks to analyze the data and write a report. You write up a PowerPoint presentation or keynote and include in there just the themes, the key words, the key quotes, the statistics, the quantitative data, qualitative data, and you include that in different styles so you can use uh, boxes to separate things. And don't forget in your presentation to group things. So if it's one theme, keep one heading, one theme, and group it with those similar topics and subjects. So make sure your presentation is organized in a way that it flows well. So to do that, you can go to slide sorter and sort out the slides and so put things together where they're meant to be and color code things. And I can show you in another video how to do that, how to create a great report presentation and drop any questions you have regarding UX research or UX design so I can help make more videos. So 
In terms of the report itself, what you want to do is make it clear and concise. A lot of people, they make very lengthy reports that are difficult to read, TLDR, too long, didn't read. You don't want to do that. You want to have reports that are easy to understand, quick to, to capture that information, quick to read because the stakeholders don't have time. Your managers don't have time. They want to read it in a few seconds, a few minutes, capture all the insights. So don't make it lengthy, which too much to read. Just have clear headings, clear paragraphs with bolded keywords and cut out all the rest. So cut out all the, uh, basically all the chaff, get rid of all of that and have just the meaty bits. So get rid of all the unwanted information, create shorter paragraphs, put them in bold, highlight the keywords and make sure it's quick and easy to read and it just tells you exactly what the problem is. So these really lengthy reports that no one really reads, no one has time to, they're pointless. I've seen some terrible reports that just put you to sleep. And what I do is I keep them simple. I keep it systematic in order and it's very quick to see what the problem is. So in one PowerPoint slide, I'll have color-coded areas. So blue will always be for the quote background. So I separate my slides and I group things together and I also color code things so it's easy to understand what you're looking at and how to understand it quickly and analyze the whole report without wasting anyone's time. That's what stakeholders need. They need information quickly and they want to see that you have the ability to break things down and keep things simple. I hope you enjoyed that video guys. I'll see you on the next one. This is 1UX1.